first got interested in art, uh, you know, probably in grade school, I remember competing with a particular cousin when we would go to visit. Uh, we'd stay up all night and uh, see who could draw the best boat or whatever the case may be. And, uh, and so I remember starting early on. Um, and then uh, we'd take uh, art courses in junior high and high school. And, uh, and then in high school, I got an uh, art scholarship uh, to go to college. And so I went to uh, Bethany College, uh, a small liberal arts school in uh, central Kansas. And uh, um, continued to take art courses throughout my, my college years. Uh, but I also got interested in anthropology at the time and uh, went to school at the University of Tulsa to get my master's degree in archaeology and uh, pursued that career for a number of years um, and not doing quite as much art, maybe some artifact illustration, that sort of thing. Uh, and then uh, when I moved here to West Texas about 19 years ago, a little over 19 years ago, uh, I, I picked up the artwork again and started doing that. How I go about starting my scratch boards generally is um, I'll go in and do a do a grid um, with watercolor pencil, grid out the scratch board, and then on my reference photos I'll do the same thing. And uh, that's how I like to transfer the image. Um, I can kind of focus on one one little square at a time that way. Now with the smaller scratch boards like uh, like this one here of the pronghorn, uh, I'll usually have those uh, floated in a frame so that the entire piece is visible within the framework. And so in that case there's no need to leave that, uh, that border. I tend to work from multiple photographs or images um, and kind of create uh, a final figure that uh, that I want that I'm envisioning. So I might, in the case of the pronghorn, I had a, uh, a couple photographs, three photographs actually. One of the pronghorn itself, one of this uh, stormy sky that I liked, and then uh, one of kind of this middle ground. I use this tool here now that uh, basically looks like a pencil with a uh, a tack or a small nail in the end of it and I just use that for my entire etching um, whether it's a small uh, 5x7 or 18x24 uh, that's my my go-to tool at this point but for years and I've been doing this since 2008 uh, and for probably at least uh, you know seven or eight years I used nothing but these uh, red-handled uh, etching tools. They look kind of like a quill pen. The main thing is with whatever tool you use, you'll want to keep it sharpened. And I use, I use boards that are already prepared. They're uh, just pieces of masonite. Um, and the surface is then covered with a white kaolin clay and then uh, black India ink over that. And so what you're doing is just etching or abrading through that black ink and exposing the uh, the white underneath. Another thing that I try to do while I'm etching is uh, have some sort of buffer between my hand and the board. Um, otherwise I leave oils on the board or I can even uh, over time uh, abrade the board a little bit with uh, rough skin or whatever the case may be. So on this uh, piece that I'm working on right now, it's um, one of the horns on the on the bighorn sheep. And I'm just uh, sort of going from lighter to darker. You don't have to press harder in those areas to make them light. You just have to go over them uh, multiple times. The more you go over an area, the lighter it's going to be. One thing that I don't do is uh, work on multiple etchings at one time because that just means I will never finish any of them. I've given a couple of workshops on uh, scratch board etching, uh, etchings over the last uh, few years. Um, uh, 
including a couple at the Museum of the Big Ben in Alpine, Texas. Um, it's always uh, enjoyable to do the workshops. I, uh, I get to try to teach some techniques um, and in the process I often learn myself from, uh, from the participants and the techniques that they kind of develop on their own. If you want to go back in and add some ridge lines to that horn in here let's say and comes up and wraps itself around here. So you can go back in with your ink pen and, uh, and add that. Age that ink with the oils on your finger a bit. Uh, there might be areas of that ridge that look a little lighter. You can go back in with your etching tool again and uh, lighten up parts of that ridge. Watching a pers person etch a scratch board is probably not terribly exciting. It's uh, probably about like watching paint dry. Not a spectator sport. And you can keep working that as much as you need to. Maybe I've lightened that up too much, so you can go back in. Just get the, uh, at least get the feel of it, the sense of that horn. I have prints made of the scratch boards, oftentimes. Um, but in those cases, it's a photographic process. Uh, the piece is photographed and then archival prints made from those photographs. The bottom scratch board here is the one I've been uh, working on a little bit uh, today. Long ways to go, obviously. But um, the top one is a, a finished uh, five by seven inch uh, scratch board etching. Um, I haven't sprayed fixative on it yet, and that'll protect these from accidental scratches, that sort of thing. Anyway, that is the process, and uh, not much more to it than that. This is a, a painting uh, that I just started not too long ago. It's, um, it's got a long ways to go, but uh, it started anyway. Um, it's much different than what I would typically do. Uh, for one thing, Somebody gave me this canvas to recycle, and it's a 30 by 40 inch canvas, which is a much bigger scale than I would typically do. Um, and also, with this one, I set some challenges for myself. I, uh, I enjoy the WPA period of the 1930s and 40s and uh, the artwork that was created then. So I have a sketchbook of one of the WPA artists from the 30s and um, this uh, sketch was in that book and um, I just enjoy the composition of it and all so I, uh, I told myself I would try to use the main elements of this uh, sketch as the, as the um, foundation of the painting. In my paintings oftentimes I'll block in areas of color uh, not necessarily go into detail yet at that stage, but just to try to create the composition and then um, gradually add more details. Unlike my etchings, which are, are naturally dark, uh, in part because of uh, the fact that you're working on a black surface originally, um, my paintings are generally quite a bit lighter. Um, but again, I'm working on a, a white canvas, and uh, uh, I like to keep them a little a little brighter than I would the etchings. After you know, after completing an etching, I, I uh, tend to go in and do a painting just as relief for my eyes, in part. But also, uh, it's a chance to work with colors and um, keep things a little brighter. I want to make sure too that my light source is consistent uh, within the subject matter. So I'll look to see if my shadows make sense. I'm going to go back in 
uh, maybe work on this next uh, fence post. Try to be careful not to muddy up the paint. Um, I, I like the various colors to, to show through and not just look like you know one color of brown or whatever the case may be. Then go in and add white or lighter lighter tones on this edge that's facing the light source. I, uh, in some ways, try to be a little more relaxed with the paintings than with the etchings. It's just the, I don't know, the nature of the, uh, the art form, I guess. The colors here. Oh, some more snow. Um, I don't use any uh, medium, any, any glazes or anything to um, help the paint to dry quicker, anything like that. I just use the straight oil paint. I do, uh, when a painting is done, I will sometimes use a, a, a varnish, um, uh, just because in those cases, on those particular paintings, um, I thought it kind of enhanced the painting to, to kind of keep the paint looking wet. For me, uh, the fact that oil paints dry slowly is a benefit because uh, I, I don't often get to spend a lot of time at any one sitting to work on a painting. That's uh, something that I, I come back to over and over as I get, a, get the opportunity. I guess if there's one uh, guiding principle as far as my art goes, um, the only thing is, it has to be something that I'm going to enjoy from beginning to end. If it's uh, if it's something that that is a chore, then I, uh, you know, I'm less likely to finish the project or the uh, the artwork. So, I uh, I like to start uh, a piece that uh, appeals to me in terms of the subject matter uh, or. Uh, you know, whatever the case may be, but something that uh, carries my interest from, from the very beginning. All right, so I'm just going to add, for the moment, just add a little black or dark gray to the white, because uh, I don't want, for the most part, I don't want any pure white snow. That's not, in cities, That's at least that's not the, often the case, that it's just all going to be pure white. And I'm between adding some snow and eventually going back in and adding some shadows on that shed it'll it'll begin to anchor that building down and it won't look like it's just kind of free floating out there that snow in so that i can take out some of these old pencil lines that i used for the truck i uh my artwork can be uh found at the catchlight art gallery in alpine texas uh, I also have uh, some work at uh, the Rare Find in McPherson, Kansas, and I have uh, cards at the uh, Nut House in Fort Davis, uh, Texas.